Tell me about the hothouse. Some sort of research facility. Everything's locked down. Total security blackout. <gasps> Let me out! You mentalist! You enviro mentalist! Whatever they're doing there is top secret. Good. I like finding out other people's secrets. Excuse me, I'm looking for Dave. Hello? Now, Doctor. If you'd be so kind as to come with me, we have work to do. Hi everyone, Tardis Guy 123 here, and today I'm going to be reviewing the 8th Doctor Adventure Hot House. So, this is, of course, quite a way back actually, I think it's 2009 this one came out. It's part of Series 3, the second release of Series 3, and it's, of course, written by Jonathan Morris and features Paul McGann and Sheridan Smith, along with Nigel Planner and Lizette Anthony. So, brand new adventures up there, full cast audio drama. Quite an old cover design, but still very much in the same format that we recognise today. And they got the Crinoid, um, which I believe this is their only other appearance outside of the Seeds of Doom. They definitely haven't come back on TV, and I don't believe um, this is. I think this is most definitely their first audio as well, and their only audio at the moment. But I'm not sure about comics and books. But anyway, and then you've got. Um, the 8th Doctor there, and Nigel Planner's character, Alex Marlowe. And they've got, I believe that's supposed to be the Earth there. So, then on the side here, we have the 8th Doctor's head there. Um, Doctor Who, Hot House, written in a nice screen. I don't see why they don't do that anymore. Um, but, what can they do? And also, Big Finish Productions 3.2. As this is the second release of the third series. And then on the back here, um, Hot House, written by Jonathan Morris, directed by Barnaby Edwards, who is returning to be finished actually for, um, I believe, The Secret History. Um, but anyway, there you have your blurb, standard stuff you'd expect on the side, and the cast there. And now let's have a look at the inside. Um, now, while, while I believe the sides were much better back here with all the colour there and whatnot, you know, and also the thicker writing and just the bigger logos, the discs definitely have improved um, over time. This is it's not a bad disc; it's just a rather bland disc, I guess. But then again, they don't really need to be anything spectacular. But anyway, you got the Third Doctor um, title sequence bit going on back there in green. And Hot House Part 1 and 2, etc. And over here we have the Who's Who. And I'll quickly take the disc out so you can see. Um, the other 8th Doctor stories, all of them are listed there. I kind of prefer what they do now, to be honest, where you've got the just four, four or six or eight releases listed there. But anyway, that's what they did back then. Let's put that back in. And now let's take out the booklet and have a quick look at that. Just get it out. So anyway, here is your booklet. Um, Eighth Doctor logo up there. And obviously there is no reversible cover because you really, really need the Eighth Doctor logo for this one. They didn't have um, the 50th logo or the new one they've got now back then. And here we have behind the scenes writer's notes and director's notes and some behind the scenes pictures. This is something I like about these old releases. They have these concept art bits inside which is this is quite nice, quite abstract. You've got crinoid silhouette there, kind of like shadow and you've got loads of catch traces to do with the League of Nature kind of like against global warming and whatnot. You've got their logo there and there's also a nice little text down there which includes the email address lucy.miller at lon.com don't believe that's an actual email address but you're welcome to try it if you really want to and finally you have in the next episode the beast of warlock and you've also got the credits there and doctor who magazine so my thoughts on hot house itself as a story it's definitely a callback to uh the seat of doom that's it and it's got a lot of sim similar elements to that. You know, the like the World Ecology Bureau are back. The Doctor doesn't land in the TARDIS, and you know it's all kind of like it starts off already 
right at the start, it doesn't really have the setup like a normal Doctor Who would, but it has but it kind of like goes in with that Seeds of Doom style. Um, and the Doctor flying in by helicopter and whatnot, that's all interesting. However, it is a third of length. Well, maybe a bit more because Big Finish episodes are longer, but the fact of the matter is, this is two episodes, Seeds of Doom is six episodes, and you know, it trying to imitate Seeds of Doom to that extent sometimes can cause it to be a bit rushed, I'm afraid, and it kind of pales in comparison because of the length bit. It's not a bad story, but I feel it's too much trying to imitate the original Krillage story. Um, it does have its own things, you know, but Alex Marlowe right there, very much at the start he feels like he's going in the, uh, what's it called, in the Harrison Chase direction, you know, I got a bit worried then. But then it was revealed that he wasn't an egomaniac, he actually wants to help the world and whatnot. And you know, that was good, I liked that kind of twist. But then he kind of goes back in the Harrison Chase direction again. Unfortunately, after that, it's quite unfortunate to be honest. Um, um, and also the crinoid, kind of like, the speaking bit, that was the one bit I wasn't too keen on in the... Uh, um, Seeds of Doom, when Kyle like, the Kryon speaks to the Doctor, he only does it once, but here they expand on that a bit more and you know, expanded on something that I'm not fond of. You know, it made me like it a bit more, but nevertheless, I'm still not overly keen on it as an idea. Um, but also, the story is quite dark in places like the Seeds of Doom, obviously, and there are a lot of dark things going on in here. Um, so, quite vicious and brutal things, and of course, the Crinoid itself as a concept as a monster is quite vicious and quite sickening. The idea that it kind of like poisons people and slowly sort of eats away at them. It doesn't transform them. It uses their very bodies as flesh to help them grow. And you know, they're very much kind of like this living compost, which is quite, quite a gruesome idea. And very well realised here, I think the soundscape of that is very nice. And characters that do get transformed, they are, they, you can hear the acne in their voice, they're very much imitating the performance of, um, I can't remember the character's name now in the season 2, but it's the second one to transform, and it very much feels like a callback to that, and that's very nice because of how it really does give you goosebumps, because their performances are that good in this, and it's quite sad at the same time, you know, that it's not reversible, and that is very much at home a lot and there's a lot of suspense in this with the Doctor and Lucy Miller. Lucy Miller herself, I do love her as a character, she's very fun and enjoyable, very witty in this especially and there's some interesting stuff going on with her at the start which is eventually kind of like, you eventually work out what it is, it's not too hard to work out. Um, but nevertheless it was an interesting I, direction to go with her character. Although it maybe could have been done with a bit more time to develop. Although, I guess, once again, two parts are. Uh, it's that new Who syndrome where it goes a bit too quickly. Although, I do feel it works quite well for the Eighth Doctor, this kind of like new Who format. And it's actually done much more better in the Eighth Doctor Adventures than it is on TV. Not entirely sure why, but there's just something about it that works much better. Um, so, overall, Hot House, the return of the Crinoid. Um, very dark story, probably darker than the Seeds of Doom actually, and that's saying quite a bit, but not quite as good, maybe because of the length, I'm not sure, but nevertheless, I do prefer Seeds of Doom, oh, but it's not a bad um, story in comparison, it is quite good, stands quite well on its own, and I would definitely give it an 8.5 out of 10, I seem to be going a lot in those .5s recently in my ratings, but you know, what can you do? 9 does seem a bit too high, but 8 seems just that little bit too low, so 8.5 is the perfect rating for this one for me. Please feel free to agree or disagree in the comments below, and I thank you all for watching this review of Hot House. Um, there won't be another review until Saturday now, because I will be away for the weekdays, so look forward to that review on Saturday, the Aztecs I'm hoping to do, and then after that we'll be reviewing another 8th Doctor adventure, we're in Dawn, another one from Series 3, featuring a returning monster from the Fourth Doctor's era. So, thank you for watching this review of Hot House, everyone. I hope you enjoyed. 
and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.